thank you, Rajeshwari Ji. And I did want to acknowledge the presence of Mark Ernst from Daryl Eisen's office and um, other representatives who have joined us uh, before, I believe, were from uh, Brad Sherman's office and Raja Krishnamurti's office. So uh, please do convey that we appreciate all staffers who do show up at these briefings and convey the messages to our respective representatives. So our last speaker here is Sundar R.D. And I will not spend too much time so that he has time to actually narrate the targeted Hindu phobia that he faced as a tech entrepreneur in California. So please welcome Sundar R.D. Thank you. Hey folks, uh, first of all, thank you for uh, having me here. Uh, you know, interestingly enough, I'm, um, I'm going to talk about a civil case. Uh, so a quick background, I've been a tech entrepreneur for the last 20 years, and I was named in what is now known as the caste discrimination case, where I was sued uh, for allegedly discriminating against an employee based on caste. The question, of course, is why is this talk relevant in a, in a meeting where we'd be talking about criminal issues, Hindophobia, and, and of course, much more deeper issues. Uh, what I wanted to show you at the end of this sort of four to five minutes of the anecdote I want to share is the parallels between you know, crimes in a civil case versus um, you know, criminal. So a uh, quick background, uh, I had I hired an employee uh, who was actually a classmate of mine. Uh, and a year later, in the company that I was doing, which was funded by Cisco, um, he, he wasn't performing. And a couple years later, with a bunch of complaints, he goes to what is known as the California Civil Rights Department, who later in 2020 filed a lawsuit saying that I discriminated against this gentleman, whom we'll call John Doe, on the basis of his caste. Now, when we talked to the Civil Rights Department, we said, why are you suing us? They said, well, John Doe is a Dalit, the lowest caste in India. We said, well, he's never applied for the job that you claim discrimination for. They couldn't care less. We, we even said that the person to whom all of these positions were granted, essentially every leadership position in my group, was also someone who identifies as a Dalit, the same lowest caste as the plaintiff on behalf of whom they're suing for. Now, I won't bore you with the details, but what's relevant is what the Civil Rights Department did. How do you create a case of discrimination, especially based on caste? Well, you first pick up one of your favorite punching bags, also known as Hinduism, and uh, you first ascribe caste to Hinduism, which is what the California Civil Rights Department did. They went then on an essential tirade of violating the First Amendment by defining caste, comparing caste, uh, and then, of course, assigning me a caste. Now, what's important here is I was interviewed by the Civil Rights Department. And I have been irreligious all of my life. There's 20 years of public data on my irreligion. They know it. They interviewed me. They couldn't care less. They went ahead, called me a Hindu Brahmin. And then uh, this sort of gave them the basis to create a caste discrimination. Now, there's a lot more details about what the Civil Rights Department did in terms of essentially fabricating data. They call my group entirely Indian. Well, they have copious employment records of people uh, of a diverse group. Uh, they even sued us for salary discrimination, even though John Doe was paid literally millions of dollars, uh, millions more than me, even though I was the CEO of the, of the company. Uh, now, why is all of this relevant? It's relevant because the parallel between a civil case and criminal behavior, or pretty much anything bad we see on the planet, all comes down to one thing, and that's the truth. When the truth is beaten up, when there is disinformation, you can pretty much create any movement, whether, that, whether what you see from students uh, you know, rising up against Israel in the United States, or Hindophobia, or any other form of phobia. It's pretty easy to take a set of people who are 
mildly or mostly rational, feed them bad facts, and over a period of time, you can seek their emotions out and build um, a, a pretty sordid uh, story, if you will. So where does this leave us? So in my own case, the state of California worked with an organization called Equality Labs, which is essentially anti-Hindu, anti-Semitic, by their own words and actions. Here is an organization that pretty much blames the Brahmins for everything in India. They blame, uh, they've called uh, Israel a rabbinical patriarchy. Uh, the Jews killed Jesus, is used in the same way as the Brahmins tried to kill Buddha. There's so many parallels to essentially malicious claims being made to demonize a certain set of people. So long story short, I'm going to keep this really brief, is my journey uh, you know, was 20 years of tech entrepreneurship. It was a beautiful cocoon. You work with really brilliant people. You do great stuff. But today I'm on a new journey. Uh, going through this experience allows me to hopefully connect with a lot more people um, so that we can essentially do the only thing that matters, which is make sure that the truth wins and make sure that good people win. So um, I'm glad for the invitation and, and happy to help in any way.